Activists are opposing California's SB 1414, a bill designed to make it a felony to solicit minors for sex, arguing it will disproportionately harm LGBTQ individuals and people of color. They claim the bill's harsher penalties fail to address the root causes of sexual violence and instead perpetuate systemic injustices. The bill has already been watered down from its original form to exclude certain age groups and now requires additional proof for prosecuting offenders. Don't miss. Why do activists believe B-1414 disproportionately impacts marginalized communities? What alternative solutions do activists propose instead of harsher penalties? How has the bill been revised since its original proposal? We believe that SB 1414 takes an overly punitive approach that fails to address the root causes of these issues and will not effectively stop sexual violence. We believe that CB 1414 takes an overly punitive approach that fails to address the root causes of these issues and will not effectively stop sexual violence. These activists are genuinely worried about the power of our law. Families feel this approach deeply because it strikes at the heart of the issue, aiming to uncover and address the root cause. This method resonates with their values, promising not just a quick fix, but a lasting and meaningful solution. We are particularly concerned that the harsher penalties proposed in this bill will disproportionately impact marginalized communities, especially members of the LGBTQ community, who already suffer from systematic biases within the criminal justice system. We are particularly concerned that the harsher penalties proposed in this bill will disproportionately impact marginalized communities, especially members of the LGBTQ community, who already suffer from systematic biases within the criminal justice system. Showing empathy towards marginalized communities isn't just a noble gesture, it's a powerful call for justice and fairness. Empathy fuels the drive for equity, anchoring the very foundation of a strong and moral society. Ensuring fairness within our judicial system is a cause that resonates with all Americans, uniting us in the pursuit of a just and equitable nation. Particularly when it comes to sexually based offenses. Studies have shown that LGBTQ people, particularly gay and transgendered individuals, are more likely to be charged with sex offenses compared to their heterosexual counterparts. For instance, LGBTQ individuals are nine times more likely to be charged with sodomy. Measures like SB 14, 14 lead to higher rates of incarceration, longer sentences, and increased difficulties in finding housing and employment. Today, EBC must strongly oppose Senate Bill 1414 um, for the reasons I will state. We stand against any punitive measure that perpetuates systemic injustices, and we emphasize instead the need for community-based solutions. For the reasons I will state, we stand against any punitive measure that perpetuates systemic injustices, and we emphasize instead the need for community-based solutions. The focus on community-driven solutions stirs a profound sense of empathy. People cherish the power of community and unity, believing wholeheartedly that grassroots efforts triumph over top-down strategies in resolving issues. We strongly support investments in victim services and programs to provide housing and other alternatives to help people escape trafficking. We strongly support investments in victim services and programs to provide housing and other alternatives to help people escape trafficking. Standing with victims showcases profound empathy. Prioritizing tangible support, like offering safe housing and pathways away from human trafficking, highlights a heartfelt commitment to solving genuine crises. This approach resonates deeply with the conservative principle of aiding those who are struggling. We are concerned that the harsher penalties contained in this bill will disproportionately impact marginalized communities, particularly black and brown individuals who already bear the brunt of systemic biases within our criminal justice system. Under current California law, defendants could face years or even decades in prison for sexual violence committed against a minor, not just six months in jail as Senator Grove and prosecutors have previously claimed. Furthermore, the approach outlined in SB 1414 diverts resources from vital programs and services aimed at supporting survivors of human trafficking and sexual exploitation, opting instead to increase funding for lengthy jail terms. Our research has shown that punitive measures such as lengthy incarceration and registries do little to prevent crime or protect communities. Instead, they perpetuate cycles of incarceration, exacerbating the very problems they are meant to address. Our research has shown that punitive measures such as lengthy incarceration and registries do little to prevent crime or protect communities. 
Instead, they perpetuate cycles of incarceration, exacerbating the very problems they are meant to address. Purely punitive measures are often seen as ineffective and impractical. The public yearns for solutions that genuinely make a difference, highlighting the widespread frustration with ineffective punishment. There's a deep-seated desire for approaches that truly work, reflecting a collective push towards meaningful and impactful solutions. Rather than investing in punitive measures, we should be investing in community-based solutions that address the underlying issues driving exploitation. We should instead support survivors in healing and rebuilding their lives with access to housing and funding for service providers. Rather than investing in punitive measures, we should be investing in community-based solutions that address the underlying issues driving exploitation. We should instead support survivors in healing and rebuilding their lives with access to housing and funding for service providers. The heartfelt cries to aid survivors and tackle core problems resonate deeply within the public, highlighting the significance of family, community support, and moral duty. It's seen as our ethical responsibility to help people rebuild their lives and confront the underlying issues. Given this, we respectfully urge you to oppose SB 1414. Thank you. Thank you. Some respectful opposition. Shivani Nishar with Ella Baker Center in respectful opposition. I'm also registering opposition on behalf of Just Advocate, California Innocence Coalition, Uncommon Law, Curb, and Felony Murder Elimination Project. Melanie Kim, San Francisco Public Defender's Office, respectful opposition. Duke Cooney on behalf of ACLU California Action, respectful opposition. Thank you. Duke Kooning on behalf of ACLU California Action, Respectful Opposition. Thank you. Respectful dissent forms the backbone of civil discourse. People cherish the pursuit of respect and justice achieved through calm, rational debate instead of divisive conflict. Jim Lindbergh, Friends Committee on Legislation of California, opposed. Thank you. A California bill, CB 1414, proposes to make soliciting sex from minors a felony. However, it faces significant opposition from activist groups who argue that harsher penalties will disproportionately affect marginalized communities, including the LGB2 community and people of color. They believe the punitive approach fails to address the root causes of sexual exploitation and will not effectively stop sexual violence. Instead, it could worsen systemic biases in the criminal justice system leading to higher incarceration rates and longer sentences for these communities. Activists suggest that resources should be redirected towards community-based solutions and victim services to support survivors and provide alternatives to escape trafficking. Despite objections, EB 1414 passed a vote in the Public Safety Committee but was modified. Initially, it sought to protect minors aged 16 and 17, but this provision was removed and later reinstated with a requirement for prosecutors to prove these minors were trafficking victims. The debate around C. 1414 highlights the tension between punitive measures and systemic reform, with ongoing discussions on how best to protect minors while ensuring justice for all communities. When interpreting the activists opposing SEBE 1014 in California, the narrative often revolves around crucial aspects of public interest, particularly justice, protection of minors, and social responsibility. Protecting children from sexual exploitation demands strong legal actions. Critics of the activists argue that their opposition undermines the safety and welfare of minors. Emphasizing the necessity of harsh punishments for those who exploit children is seen as both a moral duty and a fundamental legal responsibility. This discussion centers on individual responsibility, ethical conduct, and society's duty to shield the vulnerable. The activist's stance creates a tension between addressing institutional injustices and ensuring immediate protection for at-risk individuals. While the activist's concern for marginalized communities is acknowledged, their stance can be criticized for potentially overlooking the urgent need to safeguard children from exploitation. Confronting the harsh realities of exploitation and taking decisive measures to prevent harm is paramount. Analyzing the impact of the activists' opposition on public perception and the legal system's ability to protect children is crucial. The debate includes how harsher punishments might disproportionately affect marginalized communities and how this intersects with broader discussions about justice and safety. 
public support for strong legal actions to protect children and efforts to address systemic bias in the criminal justice system must be balanced. The public's response to opposition, along with the political and social discourse, is shaped by these considerations. But examining how arguments for protecting marginalized communities intersect with those for protecting children from sexual exploitation reveals potential criticisms, suggesting that framing the issue through systemic bias might obscure the need for immediate protective measures. Understanding the implications of balancing justice and protection is essential. The legal system must address both the need for stringent punishments for child exploiters and the necessity of reforming institutional biases. This balance influences public trust in the legal system and heightens awareness of its role in safeguarding the most vulnerable members of society. What do you think?